Welcome to another episode of Lua Basics and Dual Universe. In the last video, we set up a script to lock our brakes on and off. In this video, we're going to add a very basic HUD that will show you whether or not the brakes are toggled. We will expand on this over time, but this is just going to be a very basic setup to help you get started. So as you can see at the top left hand of the screen, you see Lock Brake Alt 4. That is the toggle um, that we created last time, and this is the, the visualization in the HUD to see whether it's enabled. So if I press Alt 4, you see that it turns on. So the lock brake is now enabled, the brakes are locked. If I press Alt 4 again, it disables that. So let's go ahead and see how to set this up. I'm going to go over to this other ship that doesn't have it set up yet. So let's hop on over there. And let's press Control L to get into the command chair. Awesome. Now, first we're going to start in the library. We're going to add a filter, start filter. Um, actually, we'll move it to the library. Let's first write it all in our system, just so you guys can see this a little better. So let's go to system, let's add a filter, and we're going to add an update filter. And we're going to start by adding our ternary function. So let's just write that to start function ternary condition true false if condition then return true else return false and end uh, now what I'm going to do I'm going to include a link in uh, below to a github that I uploaded this information to uh, just so it's a little easier to reference so let's grab that uh, just because if you write this these scripts in your favorite code editor the formatting is going to be a little better than if you write in here the only reason I'm writing in here is just for learning purposes with you all um, so let's swap that out just a little better there um, now let's write the script we're going to use so I was trying to figure out the best way to do this because there's as you can see there's a lot of just CSS styling, divs, things like that, that I'm not going to go through and really break down how that all works. I'm just going to show you how to use it for this and provide it to hopefully help you learn from. So let's grab this from the bottom all the way to this local CSS here. Uh, the local, this is we're actually going to write together so I can show you how this works. So for now, I'm just going to grab this copy it and let's come over here and let's add this in awesome I do want to show you at the bottom so we're probably wondering you know how do we get this uh, where is this from this is all pretty basic HTML and CSS and whatnot but where did we get this to tell it to show up on on the HUD so let's press apply to save what we have let's press F1 and let's look up system. As you can see, I already looked it up. I'm gonna go through the steps here. Element API, system. Uh, so this shows us some basic things we can use. And we have set screen here. Um, and then what type of content. We're using HTML and CSS. So that's why you see that included. Um, so let's go back. Let's close out of this. Control L, system, update. Awesome. So let's go up. And let's write, let's let's break this up a little bit. So we have our library filter at the top. That's just a function we're gonna use for this. And then below this, we have our CSS and whatnot. Just putting in these comments to kind of split this up for vis visualization purposes. So now we're gonna create a variable. Local lock break HUD equals ternary. So we're calling this function right here. Now we need to give it the condition. As you can see right here, we have to give it the condition and we're gonna use lock break because if we go to the lock break we created and start, that's what we're referring to as the condition. Lock break. And now we have to tell it, okay, if it meets this condition is true, what's it gonna do? If it meets the condition is false, what's it gonna do? So we are gonna have it call div class 
equals on if it's true and if it's false and actually we have to add the closing div there and then if it's false it's going to call div class equals off closing div perfect that should be correct uh, but if not it will give us a script error and we will come check out what we might have mistyped there so let's look at this just a little bit so div class on if it's if it meets this condition so let's look through and look for on right here and we'll just split this up a little bit so if it's on it's going to call this and if it's off it's going to call this and if we go down a little bit more now I already put this in here so this is what you're looking for if you ever want to add to it uh, this is the lock break HUD this is where it says lock break alt 4 on the HUD and this is what it's calling from up here awesome let's test it out and see what happens apply jump in the seat perfect you can see at the top left it says lock break alt 4 if we press alt 4 our lock break enables if we press alt 4 again it disables cool so let's get out of the chair and let's look at a couple other things here let's press control L get back in there system update now we're gonna take this ternary function and we're gonna move this so let's grab this because right now if I leave it in here it can only be used in here so let's move over to library and we're gonna add this to our library so now we can call this and other things as we as we need it so let's go back to system update now I want to show you how we can play around with this and add things we're gonna add things in another video um, like like uh, enabling and disabling your engines your boosters things like that but let's add one together here so let's type local we'll call it alt hud so altitude hud now uh, we can even add that just for clarity equals core dot get altitude so where did we get this from let's check it out apply to save f1 let's type in core core unit under element api and get now you can see here you can add some different things get construct mass um, that returns the mass of the construct if you want it up there a bunch of different ones can show you how you can kind of mess with this and add things to whatever you want we're just going to add get altitude right here um, altitude above sea level we could do core.g get world gravity you know all these different things we're just going to use this for for purposes of showing you all right control l system update and we have core dot altitude get altitude let's clean this up a little bit put this together with this so now we got to add this to the hud that's just the variable we created so let's go down now we have this div here let's create another one so div class equals control container because that's going to access the css for the control container which is just the controls within our controls hud um, let's see p we'll call it altitude close that and then we got to call that now for all you programmers out there i know this is kind of a mess and I'm sure you're aware writing in this console is uh, that's why I recommend writing this out of the console and copying it in but we're doing this for the video so hang in there with me guys all right so what did we have we had altitude hut let's grab that pop that in there and close the div awesome hit apply and let's check this out and see if it shows up in there no script errors that's good if you look at the top left altitude is now showing up um, and as you can see it's the same altitude as on the right over here 48 meters 
Um, and in later videos, we can actually look how to get rid of all this stuff and just create our own HUD that we, we prefer and customize it. Um, cool, so let's check this out. Go up, that's working. Alt 4, that's working. Brakes are enabled. Perfect. Uh, so yeah, that is that. Now uh, please keep in mind there's a million ways to do this. This is just one. There's also different ways to write that CSS and HTML. I'm sure some people are going to say, hey, you could have done it this way. Yes, we could do this many ways. I'm just trying to show for very basic learning purposes a cool way to do this. And don't, uh, don't forget, get the link below. Um, you can get all of that this whole script here. I put little comments for you. I put this in the library, put this in the system update filter. Well, pretty much all of this. And then if you guys want, you can go through, you can change colors, um, you know, background, anything that says color here, you can change the color, you can change the sizing of things. I'm just keeping it as this way for now as a default. Um, but yeah, have fun with it and fly safe or don't your call. Quick note I want to add, uh, if you look at the altitude, of course you've got what, like 16 decimal places there. So I wanted to show you quickly how we can fix that. Um, let me just pull this. So there's a function we can use called round. It's, it's just a, a common public function already created for this that we can add. There might be one built in in game I don't know but I'm gonna show you how I did it um, I actually got this from one of our IC members sagacious super helpful uh, let me throw this in let's go to our start where we were keeping our ternary and let's just mark this as ternary of course you don't have to do this I just like adding comments for everything I know some people hate that but too bad all right and we're gonna add another one for rounding so I'm going to add this to the GitHub. Let me put it here, uh, function round. And this shows us to call this. We would call round, and then we would call our uh, the number of decimal places after whatever we're calling. So I'll show you how that's used on altitude. System, update, down to our altitude. And we're going to call round. And then we're just going to put a comma after this, or comma, two, we'll round to the second decimal place. And look how simple that was. We're just calling our round function. So let's check it out, apply. And awesome, as you can see at the top left, 48.09 is a bit cleaner. And you can mess with that however you want. I just wanted to show you that super quickly. Um, cool.